This video gives a grand overview of Chapter 4, which is about databases. A computer is not just useful for computation. A computer can also store and retrieve large amounts of data efficiently. In this chapter, we discuss the foundations of efficient storage, and in particular relational databases. The first two videos discuss the two most important data structures when it comes to storing and retrieving data. In the first video, we introduce the dictionary problem. We are dealing with a bunch of objects, where each object consists of a key and a value. We want to search for objects, or possibly insert or delete objects. An efficient way to build such a dictionary is the binary search tree data structure, as the operation costs are only logarithmic in the size of the data structure. However, in the second video we discuss an even more efficient data structure, hashing. In hashing, we simply apply a wisely chosen function to a key. This function is called a hash function, similarly to hash functions used in cryptography. But when it comes to efficient storage, we do not mind if the hash function is simple and can be inverted easily. When done correctly, a hashing data structure operation only costs constant time. A primary application to binary search trees and hashing are databases. These data structures and some close relatives make databases fast. The next three videos cover the essentials of databases. First, we discuss different types of databases, with a focus on relational databases. In relational databases, the data is stored in tables. Each row in a table corresponds to an object. In this video we explain the basics of these popular table-based databases. The next video focuses completely on how to query the content of such a database. To this end, we study the classic database querying language SQL, sometimes also pronounced SQL. We then learn various query principles such as ordering, aggregating, and grouping. Most databases do not store all the data in a single table, but use multiple tables. We learn that each table has a primary key, and that these tables interact with each other by using foreign keys. Then we discuss how to depict the relations between various tables, by using an entity relationship diagram. And finally we learn how to query a database with multiple tables, by joining tables together. A lot more could be said about databases, in particular about transactions, or how databases can be connected to programming languages. Thanks for watching this video.